Hey, hey, hello everyone. So now this is our final flipbook for our John Wick. We can see that the hair is moving in the way we want because it's kind of a stiff, but it's not completely rigid, which is great. I just add um, a node called Guide Collide VTB because this is gonna push our hairs outside of the VDB. As you can see here, we had these gaps here in the John Wick hair. And if we activate this node and we increase this value, this surface offset, we will have this 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 result of the hair like going up and going outside of the BDB and that's all so the next we should do is create uh, the materials and all the stuff so first of all I always start with environment light so just double click or just control click and here you have your light for this example, I'm going to use a uh, HDRI map, which I love it, which is the one from, from Substance Painter. It's called Bonifacio Street. I, lo I love that name. So cool. Once with the light, if you want to check this, go and check this object, this icon here. If you want to adjust your lights or all this kind of stuff, remember that you can light enable for the rendering and enable light in viewport. So if I don't want to see the light in the viewport, just hide this option. But I prefer to work like this without lights. Cool. So after this, we're going to create the material network, which is like the material tab, but everything is here in the sub context. We go to material, here we have our stuff. Okay, so we can pick one shader or we can go to material palette, go to hair and transfer this hair into our mat. Should be here, okay. I have a lot of hairs here. Okay, just pick the ones you want. Let me take this and let's go outside. Let's go to material and here paste your material. So this is going to be like John Wick hair. Cool. So cool stuff that we should know about this. The first that I'm always speaking about is the root and the tip color. As you can imagine, the root is for the low part of the hair and the tip is the top part of the hair. So I always, when I'm doing animals or, or stuff that I have the maps, I always use the map here and I'm driving the color using the map. But in this case, we don't have any kind of map. So we are going to create a a black for the root and something less black for the hair. Something like that. Let me adjust it. This has to be like really, really dark. And here you can control the amount of the, of the blending between the, the root and the tip. Okay. So if, for example, if you put this like red and let's apply it into our John Wick. Yeah, let me try to, you go to object, you have these materials, John Wick here. Cool. So what I said is that if you have this John Wick and this could be green, Okay, this ramp allow us to control when we are gonna 
blend between the root and the tips, okay? Let's revert to the folds and let's change the color again to what we want. Something like that, it's cool. And this is the white hairs that we just created here. These are the white hairs, which is kind of cool because we are using this information for this parameter. And I usually leave it as white, but not completely white, okay? Some more parameters to keep in mind is the intensity and the reflection size. Usually these two are quite high and we have to decrease it. And the last one is the secondary reflections, which is again controls the secondary bounces of the lights. And here we have the same. We have the root color and the tip color. So we can readjust the secondary reflection for these two parts. And another cool stuff I always touch is the opacity. So the opacity, this is for the root and this is for the tips. So if we take this, the tip, and we decrease it like in a dark, darkest color, so the tip is gonna be like more transparent, okay? Something that we are gonna adjust later because we need to do renders to to see these changes. Cool. And remember that once we are doing rendering, maybe we we will should we will need to adjust these values and these ramps. Okay. So let's go to render view. If you don't have this, just hit the plus and go to view to do 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 render view. Mantra rendering render view. Okay. And here we're gonna create a ROB network, which is the same if we go into the ROB tab, to into the out tab, but I prefer again to have everything in sub. So here I'm gonna create a mantra. This is gonna be the rendering part, it's gonna be PBR, physical based rendering, which is like how Arnold works. And I'm gonna increase this a little bit, okay? So again, I'm not gonna uh, spend a lot of time doing the shading, but I have a material network here where I import the textures for the shirt and the textures for the pants, okay? But I'm gonna leave you these, these maps in the, in the course so you can just import it, okay? Let's do a quick render and let's see what we have. Select Mantra PBR. Let's let's change the name to this could be um, low rendering. And we can create another one for high. Like it's like a take. Let me put res, the high res and the low res. And this is going to be rendering. Cool. So here we're going to create, we're going to pick first the low res with the camera one. And let's hit render and see, let's see what we have. I like to turn off the progressional rendering. Cool. So what we will need to do is if we are focusing in our hair, it's good to have a camera for our hair. So we're gonna go out and we're gonna go to the scene view. And in this part, we're gonna come here and we're gonna add the camera. Remember to press control and hit the icon. Cool. So this is gonna be a camera two. Now let's go to the render. Let's switch the camera to camera two and let's do another render. 
cool, it's looking great, but we have to adjust again the the color of our hair because now it looks like like a granny. Okay, so these are stuff that we are gonna touch in the primary reflections, so we can maybe decrease these values, or we can try to reduce a little bit the reflection size. So let's start by changing the deep color to something darkness, something like that. And it's gonna be like something really black. Something like this. Let's hit the refresh tool here. Another cool stuff I recommend you is to open this arrow here and go into the eye and in the background import your Bonifacio Street HDRI. Hit apply and now we will have this background that we can hide by clicking this icon. So we can check how it's working with and without. Okay. So let's adjust a little bit this, the reflection size because now it's too much. Let's see what we have. And in the secondary reflection, we already know that this should be like something darker. As you can see here, now in the secondary reflection, now this is a lot of Maybe it's, it's too dark. So again, come into the root, make it like less dark, and you have to do tweaking, a little bit of tweaking when you are doing shading. This to less. So let's, it's going down. Something like that, let me see. Okay, it's getting better. Let me increase again the intensity. Sorry, the reflection size. And always you can remember to do snapshots to then compare the result. Always remember, we can increase the intensity, which is this value here. We can open, increase it to this. And remember that we have the intensity of the light, which is a, a parameter that it could be great in terms of lighting. So we can go here, we can go to the light, we can go to our HDRI and increase the light exposure just a little bit. Let me, just to three. And the sampling quality, if we want to reduce the noise, it's good to increase this value just a little bit. Maybe we can add to three. Be great. That's cool. Remember that once we activate the tip color for the secondary reflections, again, we will need to readjust this because this is too white. But the more reflections, the more organic is going to be the result. You should know that. But this result is much better. Okay. I like it. Maybe we, we can end like twitching just some of the parameters. But I think it's kind of a cool result. For, for like, remember that we are FX artists and we don't have to spend too much time doing rendering. It's something that in production they are going to ask you because you have to present your dailies and if your daily is really cool because you, you, for example, you did the explosion and you did like a really nice shading and all this kind of stuff, it's much easier to get the, the final approval from your lead or your supervisor. So it's something that FX artists always have to know just a little bit. Okay, something like that, it's kind of cool. Can decrease this a little bit more. 
and this a little bit more. Hit refresh. And remember that we are not working in this in this in this close up. So we're going to work in further so if we can see any stuff that you don't like at all so don't worry because we always have to check with the final render and with the final camera it's good now it's much better right what we could end it is in the opacity let's take the tip and make it like more transparent something like that So now that we can compare different shots that we have done because we are taking snapshots from our rendering. Yeah, it's kind of cool, right? And let me just do a quick test by going into our hair. Let me stop the render in this part. In the hair gen, I'm gonna decrease a little bit more my size, my thickness. Let me try with five. Let's do a snapshot and let's hit render and let's see what we have. And once I'm touching the thickness, the final thickness adjustments, I like to create a note, a sticky note and write down the thickness. So all thickness was something like 0 0.00074 because it wasn't bad at all and it's good to write it down. They think that with this is much better. Much better. I, I I prefer. So cool. Let's leave the session here and let's continue in the next one. See ya.